So let's say you're in Unity and you have your meshes in there and you're taking a look at them. Maybe you, um, you're flying around, you're checking things out and you realize, ah, crap, um, I forgot a tee box right there. Or, um, hmm, that green, it's just not the right shape. I should change that. Or I forgot a semi-rough around this fairway. I forgot this. I forgot that. I needed to change the shape of this. Or you decide I need to dig out these bunkers a little bit more. I want them deeper. Or I need to flatten this tee box. Or I need to flatten this green. Um, all those things, this is what this video is about, which is making changes to existing meshes. You know, Once they're inside of Unity, how do you go back and make changes? So this is going to be talking about that, and I'm going to show you guys real examples. So this is just going to be theory, and then subsequent videos will show you examples uh, of actually doing it. Um, so the scenario is, you know, you've imported all your FBXs in Unity, and you did a set mesh, or maybe maybe even didn't do a set mesh. It's kind of irrelevant at this point. Um, but you realize, again, you're missing a T-box, or you're missing some other mesh, or you realize you need to change the shape or position of something in there. Left, or You need to move it left, you need to move it right. Or, or maybe you need to change the undulation, as I refer to, you know, flatten things, deepen things. Now, what you have to be aware of is that for these first two, when you're changing the shape of something or you're changing, um, you're adding a new shape, you have to go back into Inkscape and do that, bring it into Blender. And at that point, you're going to lose any of the customizations you've done with the OPC Blender tools. So, you know, if you've done any custom vert painting, if you've, you know, changed the lips of your bunkers, um, used any of those tools that I went through in Blender, you're going to lose all that stuff. Okay. Now there are ways, more advanced videos, which hopefully I'll be able to cover um, to get around that, but you want to avoid that. Okay. As much as possible. So that's why I'm saying you really need to inspect your meshes and make sure that they're how you like, and, and don't spend a lot of time, especially with your first two holes, customizing all that stuff. Because when you go back and you add all your other holes in and bring those through, you're going to be basically overwriting everything that you maybe customize inside of Blender. Okay. So what, how do we do these things? So let's say we want to add a new mesh and or we want, you know, change a mesh. So we need to go back into Inkscape. Now you think, oh my gosh, I have to go through all this again. Once you have all this stuff done, you know, moving back through the cloud and Blender, it's actually not that bad. It actually is pretty quick and you'll get used to that workflow. Uh, it becomes like muscle memory. So you need to go back and you need to add those shapes inside of Inkscape or change them inside of Inkscape. Okay, so if you're adding a semi, you need to add it. If you're changing the shape of a tee box or green, you need to go back into Inkscape and change that. Okay, that's the first place to start. Then what you do is you, you know, you're going to save that no sat SVG again and you're going to upload it through the Clender. Remember the form going to send it through Clender, and then the Clender is going to process it, and then it's going to send you back your Blender file, your Blender post mesh file. Um, you're going to open up that post mesh file, which of course includes all the Blender tools, and now you need to re-import your terrain again into Blender, and you need to conform your meshes to that terrain. Um, and at that point, you know, if you did any custom Blender work, you're going to need to redo it at that point. Um, but I would suggest, you know, do that custom Blender work kind of last at the end of the process. All right. Um, but now what you're going to do is you're going to need to, you have an FBX folder where your, your meshes get exported when you, that last step, you need to remove the ones that are in there, the old ones. Okay. Um, you can delete them and then you're going to export your meshes out of Blender into that FBX folder. And then in Unity, you're going to, actually not in Unity, in Windows Explorer, we're going to move those FBXs into that Unity FBX folder, uh, overwriting the old ones, okay? And I'll show you. So you're going to slide those all in. Now you're going to overwrite the old ones, but any new ones that you created, okay, will be new inside that folder, okay? Um, and that's important. Uh, that you do that correctly. Now, if you do it the wrong way, then you're going to actually have duplicates. I'm going to show you how to avoid that. And then um, you might need to run set mesh again or, or single mesh default. Um, set mesh, remember, that'll restore all the defaults. Or if you only imported a couple new um, a couple new shapes, you could just run the single mesh default, the right click capability. So it really depends on how much stuff you want to update and how much customization you did in Unity. You might not want to lose that stuff as well. So a single mesh default um, update will, will resolve that. 
Um, if you want to flatten or deepen, um, you know, change the undulation of a mesh, like flatten a tee box, dig a bunker deeper, or flatten a green, or general terrain work, as I call it, um, you're going to dig or shape your terrain in Unity using RAM or the Unity tools, which were in the previous tutorials, okay, just like you normally would. And then you're going to export your terrain OB OBJ. You're going to open your existing post mesh blend file. Okay, so now since we're working with the, your existing post mesh blend file, we're not creating a new one, you won't lose your OPCD customizations. Okay, so that's an advantage. So any train, all we're going to do is we're just essentially, we're just going to reconform. Um, so we pull in our OBJ, our train OBJ, into our existing blender, and we just reconform our meshes. Now, there will be a couple things that you potentially could lose, which is like some shape of your sand, uh, your bunkers, and your lips. But that's pretty easy. If you just remember those settings, you can apply those again to your bunkers. Um, so just remember, if you reconform, you lose like anything in Blender, the customizations that you did like bunker lips. But that's really easy to get back. All you have to do is remember those settings and then apply it to all your bunkers. So not too big of a deal. Um, and then just like before, we're going to remove the existing FBXs in your FBX folder um, using Windows Explorer. We'll export our FBXs out of Blender. And then we're going to move those into Unity, overwriting the old ones. Um, and then we might not even need to run set mesh again, because since we're, we're this is would be much easier when you see it. When you overwrite the 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 existing FBXs in Unity, the ones in your scene will reference the new ones, and you actually won't lose your materials at all. Okay, so you actually shouldn't even need to run set mesh, but um, um, you might, and we'll, we'll show you that in another example. So on to the next video where I'm going to show you an example of adding a new shape into Inkscape.